It's 2016 and welcome back to another episode of Solid Ground. I hope everyone enjoyed themselves with their family, their friends and food over the holidays. Before the holidays, I went through the topic of the accuracy of the Old Testament. This week, I'm going to go through part 2 which is talking about the accuracy of the New Testament. The B -I -B In November 2015 of last year, Business Insider published a video discrediting the accuracy of the New Testament. Why am I not surprised? So in response to that, I will be going over the accuracy of the New Testament today. The New Testament contains 27 books written by eyewitnesses who are fishermen, tax collectors, doctors and theologians. Basically the good, the bad and the ugly. A diverse group of people that witnessed the life and resurrection of Jesus. These 27 books are found in the Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, and Protestant Bibles. The New Testament, also known as the New Covenant, forms the basis of how Christians should live their lives. Christians no longer live under the law of Moses, but under the grace of God. The New Testament contains the Gospel, which is the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, as well as the continuation of His works in the world, as recorded by the Apostles. New Age spiritual gurus like Deepak Chopra say that we can't rely on the New Testament, and our Muslim friends say that the book has been corrupted. In a field of many opinions, how do we know who is right? For that, we will have to look at the manuscript evidence. Some claim that There are actually two things that gives us the assurance of the accuracy of the New Testament. The vast amount of documents that we have and the time gap of when it was written. What do I mean by this? Firstly, among all the ancient works in the world, the New Testament is the most well-documented book. We have well over 24,000 manuscripts, out of which 5,600 of them are in the original Greek language, so we can verify what is being said. The next most well-documented book is Homer's Iliad, with only 647 manuscripts. Other works that we consider reliable are Caesar, which only has 10 manuscripts, and Plato, which only has 7. Do you know how many Quranic manuscripts we have left before the third caliph Uthman officially compiled it? Probably none. Why? Because after compiling the Quran and distributing it across Arabia, Uthman ordered for all the other manuscripts by the early Muslims to be burnt. Hence, there is no way for us to textually prove that the Quran has been preserved. Read Sahih Bukhari 4987-4988. to The manuscripts that we have left are basically the ones that Uthman put together. I wanted to ask an important question. Why would he destroy all the other manuscripts if they were all saying the same thing? Yet, with little textual evidence to support all these other works I just mentioned, we still consider these ancient works historically reliable. But for the Bible that has 24,000 manuscripts, out of which 5,600 of them are in the original Greek language, we say no, we can't trust the Bible. The Bible has been corrupted. I just don't get it. Anyway, because of the vast amount of New Testament manuscripts that we have available, we have the ability to compare these manuscripts to verify what is being said. Also, when textual variants are present, by comparing these manuscripts, we are able to reconstruct the original reading of the text. Secondly, the time gap. Now, I often hear people say that we can't really know what happened 2,000 years ago. What they fail to understand is that the crucial gap is not the gap between the time of the event and today. The crucial gap is the evidence and the events described by the evidence. If the gap between the events and the evidence for the events is short, then how long it has been since the evidence of the event to the present day is irrelevant. Good evidence does not become bad evidence because of the lapse of time. What do I mean by this? For example, I once went for an open mic night at Village Underground. Yes, I love live music. And the bouncer refused to let me in. Even though I had a valid government ID, he said because my ID had expired, he couldn't let me in. I pointed out to him that even though my ID had expired by a few months, my date of birth is still valid. My date of birth does not become invalid just because my ID has expired. And yes, I got in. September 18, 1985 will always be my date of birth. It will be the day I celebrate my birthday this year and it will still be my date of birth 1,000 years from now even though I'm dead. You see, truth like Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Good evidence does not become bad evidence simply because of the lapse of time. When you look at the time gaps of the New Testament, at the earliest we have it to be at around 50 years. When you compare these with other ancient sources about historical figures, Sahih Bukhari, which talks about the life and sayings of Muhammad, comes at 200 years. Alexander the Great is at 400 years. 
and the works of Plato is at 1300 years. The evidence that we have for the New Testament is overwhelming and it easily outweighs all other ancient historical figures. If we do not trust in these records, then we have to throw out everything we know or think we know about ancient history. That means throwing out things about Muhammad, Alexander the Great and all the other dead guys. There are other factors that make the New Testament trustworthy such as fulfilled prophecies, oral tradition as well as the criterion of embarrassment. However, from a historical perspective, when you look at the wealth of evidence, textual criticism and the time gap, we have good reasons to be confident that the New Testament that we read today has been accurately preserved. Now I'm going to keep it real now. If you are truly truly my friend and you care about me and you know that my Bible is a book of fiction, it has been corrupted or I'm interpreting it in the wrong way then you know what, come up and tell me, I'll give you permission to, I will not get offended because my priority is to God. My priority is not to a religious group or culture or my family or anything else, it's to God. You know, however, if you do know this and you choose to keep quiet, what does it say about you? I can only think of three options. The first one is, you don't really care that I believe in a fake or corrupted book. You don't care that I'm believing in something false or I'm believing in the wrong thing. Number two, you don't really believe in your own faith Hence, you're not convinced that my Bible is corrupted or it's fiction. If not, I would have heard from you by now. And then number three, you secretly believe that what I'm saying is true. You think that the Bible is accurate and you agree with everything that I say. Hence, you're basically a Christian hiding in the closet and you just need to be brave enough to step out. Again, if you disagree with me on the accuracy of the Bible, you need to show me the five W's and one H. What is that? You need to show me what was corrupted, where and when it was corrupted, who corrupted it, why it was corrupted, and how it was corrupted. You can't simply say and state your opinion that the Bible is corrupted without showing me evidence. If not, you're just blindly following the opinion of others. Now, the foundation of our faith is built on Jesus, not on the Bible. It's because of Jesus, who He is, and what He's done for us. That is why I believe in the Bible. If I put the Bible first, I have it the other way around, and I'm setting myself up for failure. In fact, that is the main reason why the biggest critic of Christianity today, Mr. Bart Kerman, turned from a passionate Christian to an agnostic. And that is the reason why many Christians today leave the faith because they have it the other way around. Think about it, 2,000 years ago, someone claimed to be a Christian just by hearing the Gospel, even though they did not have the New Testament. The New Testament doesn't determine whether or not you are Christian. It is Jesus and your belief in Jesus that determines whether or not you are Christian. Do not get me wrong, the New Testament is essential for us to understand more, to help us develop our faith, for us to understand doctrine. But it is all first built on the foundation of Jesus and what He has done for us, not the other way around. If you found this video useful, like it, share it or comment about it in the comment section below to let me know what your thoughts are, whether you agree or disagree with me. Now that I've covered the accuracy of the Bible in two separate videos, join me next week as I go through the art of textual criticism and paleography. In the meantime, I wish you guys all the best for 2016 in this new year. And remember this, follow the evidence wherever it leads. Peace out.